Well, good morning, Kickstarters. Welcome to Thursday. And if you're watching the replay, absolutely fantastic to have you along for what I think is going to be an inspirational conversation about how businesses are adapting during COVID-19. And this morning, I'm pleased to be able to welcome to the show the founder of the Cafe 63 franchise. And Hamish, thanks very much for joining us. I understand that you're in North Queensland at the moment. How's the temperature up north at the moment? surprisingly chilly i didn't expect it at all but um townsville's having a bit of rain and cloudy and it reminds me a little bit of new zealand today oh there you go so you've got two kiwis reminiscing and finding that even in queensland we can have a little bit of a feel of that uh, maybe waikato cold mornings uh, hamish let's go back and actually talk about how cafe 63 actually got underway because when we look at it now it's 30 stores and in a reasonably short space of time, it probably seems a long time to you, or maybe it's just gone by in a, a wisp. But Cafe 63, how did that idea that started at 63 Racecourse Road in Brisbane actually come about? Um, it was really an accident um, and a series of mistakes by myself in terms of shifting to Australia and not really understanding the marketplace here. Um, and so, so you're looking at that store getting underway, and I understand you had a deli idea, but it very quickly morphosized, and, and you and Val, business partners, putting this together. Now we have a cafe that is unique in that many of the stores will have green, green grass on the floor. Let's talk about that in a moment. Very iconic black and white branding. Uh, the fact that you can have a florist in a cafe means that I don't get in trouble at Valentine's Day. Tell me how some of these ideas started to come together. Um, I think it was from that first um, series of mistakes. Um, so, in fact, we purchased a delicatessen and uh, we gave up three days later after we'd started the business and really realised that there was no chance. A gentleman came in to buy some ham and uh, he asked me to slice it, which I did, and I got the meat slicer, I got the ham and I cut it up from. He asked me to cut the fat off it, which I did, and then the transaction came to $1.80. And then it took me 18 minutes to clean the meat slicer. Oh, no. <laughs> I was in a bit of trouble that night, and I thought, well, shall I tell Valerie how much trouble we're in? But I chose not to. I was lucky the following day everything was resolved because he came back and wanted another $1.80 worth of ham. And so at that point, I realised this wasn't going to work. So we had to dig ourselves out of this hole. Well, I'm going to be telling you an interesting story about a son of mine who's also involved in delicatessen a little bit later on. So you start to move it into the cafe set, and some may have thought that that was actually brave or brash because there's so many cafe franchises out there, so many coffee shops, etc. Did you have a dream that it was going to become a network or a franchise at the time, or was this just one store, let's sort it out? No, just one store trying to get ourselves out of trouble. What We got a bit lucky. Um, There's a big shift in the market in Brisbane and Queensland. So five-star dining disappeared almost altogether over the last four or five, five years after that. Uh, there was a shift to breakfast. Uh, there was a big shift to, I'm going to say, um, engagement. That is people gathering together in a morning sense rather than evening sense. Um, there was a shift away from alcohol and there was a shift to families getting together in a venue where they could enjoy themselves. Well, I think it's interesting that you're able to tap into that because I, I tend to agree with you. And isn't it interesting, just even in my local area, one of the shopping centres was reimagined and what was just one food outlet and a, um, a fish and chip shop now has 23 food outlets around the car park, which absolutely blows my mind when I think about it. But it's a change of, I guess, the way in which we're living. Now, if you're interested in knowing more about Cafe 63 as you're watching the episode, please go along to cafe63.com.au. You'll be able to find more information about the franchise, about the different cafe stores and where they're located. And I was just noticing, Hamish, that if I did a little bit of a Google Maps, I could probably go on a three-day walk from where I live into the centre of Brisbane. And I'd hit a few Cafe 63s. So tell me, when did one Cafe 63 become not enough for you and you had to start thinking about the future? Um, when we'd grown the Racecourse Road business, or let's say when our customers had chosen to support us, uh, we discovered that there was no future in the hospitality industry for most of our staff. 
And uh, the first of our staff came to us, that's Mallory and I, and asked if they could open their own cafe. And we said, look, absolutely, we would love to help and we're keen to provide you with some free fatherly advice. At this stage, we certainly wish they had chosen that option. <laughs> but what they wanted and needed uh, was a brand, a system, a process, an ability to negotiate with landlords and understanding how other stakeholders in the business are critical to its survival. So the first 12 stores we opened were opened by staff from the original location. Well, it's not unusual for me, and many people will know that my favourite local store is the Cafe 63 just down the road at Red Bank Plains, but I've been known to frequent a few others as well. And as we can see from the background that you and I are enjoying, it's not just a case of bacon and eggs that we can go for when we go to a Cafe 63. And I think this is something that impresses me about your menu. The fact that really at any time of day, there's a unique breakfast or lunch or dinner option. So I can go out for a date with my wife. I can go out for breakfast as I want to hit the day. How did the menu come about? And tell me about some of these interesting menu names that you have. Uh, the menu came about because we discovered that in the breakfast market, uh, everyone's quite unique. So an interesting statistic, 62% of all of our meals are changed by the customer, modified. And uh, we chose that to be one of our key points of difference. So we designed and built a kitchen and a system that could modify and change any meal. We also identified that in uh, the cafe business, a bit like dairy farming and um, trying to utilize your assets as much as possible, we need to extend our trading hours because we were paying rent for 24 hours, seven days a week. It just seemed sensible to see if we could extend the business further. We had many attempts that failed. We tried to sell coffee beans. We tried to be a delivery business well before Uber. We tried to be an ice cream shop. Uh, but in the end, we found that our key components of flexibility, encouraging people to enjoy the experience and giving them, again, as I said, as much flexibility as possible. Um, started to develop the menu. Now, Hamish, uh, you've probably seen the shows that I've seen where Chef Gordon Ramsay comes in and tries to get restaurants out of trouble, and he'll very much distill the menu down to a few small items. Did you still have to start small and then expand it out and look for what the locals were actually going to gravitate to? And does the menu get revised from time to time? Yes, the menu's revised regularly. At this stage, it's three to four times per year. Um, now, we're the opposite of Gordon. So what we did was we looked at what the customers wanted and tried to deliver that to them on an extended time frame and then redesign the kitchen to be able to deliver that in a systematic, uh, efficient process. So most restaurateurs just think we're absolutely nuts. And we're happy Why? about that. Well, I have to say that that's actually a compliment because one of the things that blows me away is that I can go out for whether it's a lunch or a dinner and I can choose from an extensive range and I'm amazed at how fast the kitchen is actually able to turn it around and get it out to me. Um, sometimes it's the dinner before the coffee and that's pretty impressive in terms of speed delivery out of the kitchen. Hamish, um, you come from an agricultural, economics and marketing background. What was the attraction into the cafe industry? And, and given what's been happening with COVID, any regrets? Um, look, there's many things in my life. If I'd had the chance to do it again, I may have done something slightly different, but I wouldn't call it regrets. So early on in my career, I learned to make mistakes. I've got better and better at making mistakes. <laughs> we actually believe our whole business is about mistakes. So what we've just taught ourselves to do is how do we fix a mistake quickly, learn from that and make something better. So I don't think regret even enters our mind now as, as a term, uh, because we accept that not everything is going to be right. Now, I've got to say that for a lot of people, 2020 will seem like one big mistake that was taken out of our control. But when I look at the, the hospitality industry, there's a lot of people that have had to innovate. And, and I saw it happening right before my eyes. I saw the cafe local to me having to shut down their internal dining area. They had to reposition their, um, their counter to the outside. And yet suddenly there was innovation on Facebook. I could text in my order. I could pick it up outside. 
there were things like being able to um, get bread and milk. And what really impressed me was the heart and, I guess, um, application of the local staff making it happen. How proud were you as you saw the different franchise operations pivot and change during this time? Um, extremely proud of what we had achieved because when that Sunday night, which I probably will never forget, and uh, our Prime Minister chose to shut down most of our industry, um, the following two weeks were incredibly traumatic. Uh, and at that point, we were expecting six months at least of severe pain. Uh, but in fact, I'd say 14, 15 days after that, uh, we'd already found a pathway to survival, uh, which focused around managing cash in the first instance, uh, delivering or let's say working hard to build a relationship with our landlords who we needed help to get through. And I'm pleased to say the majority of them shared the pain with us, which we appreciate immensely. Um, we saw relationships improve. So an example is landlords. Are those landlords that um, immediately offered us help and immediately stood beside us? Um, it's fair to say that we will be with them forever. Yeah, I've had the same experience of going through um, a charitable organisation during the, I think it was 2004 Bandarache tsunami, and that really took the wind out of the sails of many Australian charities. But there were printers, there was Australia Post and other suppliers that worked with us during that time, and it certainly tied you back to them that the fact that they knuckled down and helped you through certainly was um, a good partnership. Hamish, can you give me some examples of some of the innovations that came back to you at the head of the organisation that you um, saw as great innovations on the ground floor of some of your cafes? Um, I think it's just how quickly they were able to adapt from a dine-in table service model to a takeaway model, um, adjust their costing, try and deliver as best as they could to their customers. Um, your local at Red Bank's a very good example. Um, so Queenie and Minnie and the team did a spectacular job of keeping customers and hanging on to their regulars and in fact growing the base of customers during that period of time. So when they come out of COVID and into stage three, um, their sales are now greater than before COVID. And, and it is interesting, we were just talking about, um, knock, uh, I guess, locking down those partnerships with suppliers, but I think probably we've created some lockdown relationships with clients as well. Oh, huge. Um, one of, and the other very heartening things, for example, is we, we run a loyalty program, are the number of customers that refuse to take their loyalty. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that was the same for myself. And the uh, the actual loyalty card actually got tossed away in the car and we didn't bother bringing it out. And I remember one incident that really still sits with me is that I rang up and I have become a bit of a fan of the Green and Gold Burger. And I mentioned to you just a little while ago that I've got a son and Ethan actually works in a delicatessen. Uh, but he actually went online last night to give us this comment on Facebook. The Green and Gold Burger, whenever we can, it's definitely a favourite in this household. But I remember when I rang and I was actually going to order one, and they said, well, you actually get a free can of Coke with that, and you actually get this. And I said, you don't need to give me any more. I'm very happy to pay for that Green and Gold Burger with my fries and know that I'm supporting you. But the generosity coming back from your team was exceptional. Hamish, um, just talking about the future now. Um, I want to kind of get a picture of where you see things. You're in Townsville at the moment. Congratulations, you've um, opened in Perth. Now, we've just looked at a map of Queensland. You, you're doing well with the franchise, but where do you see Cafe 63 heading? Um, it's, it's odd again, but we don't have a plan. So what we found is best to just listen to our customers and for a, a store to be successful, it has to have a... Um, a successful operator. It's more important than location. It's more important than the menu. It's more important than anything else. As you can see, if you don't have enthusiasm on the ground, we can't deliver um, a place where it's nice to meet and get the community together. So out of our last, I think it's seven stores, uh, five of them were um, existing people opening their second or third store. 
So I think our future lies again within our staff. Um, so our last two stores were opened by people who started with us as a dishwasher. Um, I'm not saying there's anything disparaging, but um, they worked their way through and they now own quite successful businesses. So I would say it's uh, what our staff want and where they would like assistance with their future and what our landlords want. So today I'm uh, in Townsville with um, landlords that I've been working with for five or six years who now say, look, please, Hamish, is there any opportunity in that you can bring your brand to Townsville? And then we ask our team, and we've got a couple of people in Toowoomba who are interested to move to Townsville, and so maybe it will happen. Uh, be interesting. This uh, sounds fantastic. So very responsive to the market and seeing where yes. the interest is coming from. Are you finding any interest coming from the southern states, Victoria, New South Wales at this point? Um, we do from landlords. So we've spent a little bit of time in Canberra and in Hobart um, just looking at what might be the possibilities. That was all pre-COVID. I can't tell you after COVID what the situation is. And of course, Victoria, to be honest, scares us a little bit at the moment. Mm, We've tested as much as we can, but we don't think there's anything we can do to prepare other than keep our places clean, keep ourselves hygienic, keep our customers and staff as safe as possible. Um, other than that, we just have to keep going forward uh, with a really strongly realistic approach to things. If you're wanting to know more about the Cafe 63 brand, I encourage you to check out their social media platforms. You can have a look at instagram.com slash cafe 63 Australia. You can see on the screen here just some of the photos that are from right around the different brands. And I think I suspect that is a green and gold burger right in the middle of the shop there. Right. So, yeah. so there you go. But listen, we talk about green and gold burgers and just here we'll have a quick look at the Facebook page. Uh, which branch is this here that we're looking at this lovely photo there, Hamish? Uh, this is our um, Chermside store. This is a Westfield Gorgeous. shopping centre in Queensland. Yes, it's a fantastic store. Um, it's um, Westfield's busiest cafe in the whole of Australia. Well, that is a fantastic recommendation. Incredible. It's almost double any other cafe. And let's just circle back to the menu very quickly. We've got the Green and mm -hmm. Gold Burger. Extensive. But we see names like Everest. We see names like Buck Shelford turning up. How did these names come about? Uh, those of us that maybe enjoyed watching rugby in the 70s, 80s and 90s might see a few names we remember. Um. Actually, it's interesting. Firstly, it comes from being able to develop a system. And so with an economics background, um, I identified early on that a few critical mistakes can happen in a cafe business, particularly when you're at speed. But if we deliver the wrong meal to the wrong table, uh, this is a very expensive correction to make. So we identified that we really needed to code each item in something unique that um, allow the customer, the staff, the kitchen to be sure of what we were communicating about. So the name started purely as a system to avoid error. Um, and then we found we could have fun. Um, so often they would follow some sporting event that was on some approach that we could bring something out of the community. Um, you may even know that we've got a meal called carbon tax, uh, which makes things interesting as well. Uh, but just a link to uh, New Zealand was helpful. Um, we have a lot of produce that comes from New Zealand and Australia that we serve in our business. Um, and so we just made it creative and innovative. Green and gold was obviously um, a, a link to Australia. It became very popular. It's almost iconic in Brisbane now, I guess you know. And uh, with that, uh, let's say, 18 to 22-year-old market, it's just huge. I watched the ones <laughs> I'd like to thank you for that compliment, Hamish. I'll take 18 to 22 any day of the week. You're but welcome. I have to say that if I lined that burger up with anything on the market from any franchise, an enormous patty, great bacon, hash brown, beautiful mayo and, and salad, and the fries with a little bit of spice as well, that is a solid gold winner anywhere on the planet. So I hope that one day you have an opportunity to take home a gold in some burger competition. Be Hamish, nice. this has been absolutely wonderful. Um, I'd just like to close by asking about anything that you feel has been a tremendous learning 
out of this whole COVID experience. We wish the whole industry well. We wish Cafe 63 well. But what have we learned in terms of being able to either pivot or survive during this time? Oh, for me, it's probably my greatest learning experience so far. Um, and often now call it the University of COVID. Uh, we were given a unique opportunity to rethink our whole approach to things, uh, which is just enlightening. So we come out the other side, not in a worse situation, but a much better situation. We were given the opportunity to tidy up a whole lot of stuff that we should have tidied up before now, because we had to be clean and fresh and ready for the, the other side, uh, which we are now confident about. So I think our level of confidence post-COVID, believe it or not, is greater than our confidence going in. Well, absolutely brilliant to have you on The Morning Kick, and we look forward to hearing greater things of the growth of Cafe 63, popping in for a coffee, a flat white with an extra shot, two sugars, and always hot, and great service as well. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you, Andrew. Well, wasn't that a great uh, opportunity to catch up with somebody who not only is entrepreneurial and doing well in life here in Australia and growing this uh, this cafe franchise network, but also leading their team through COVID-19 and really enjoyed finding out some of the insights. You may have noticed that the background for me today, virtually or otherwise, this is actually my local Cafe 63, where I enjoy popping down to see Queenie and Winnie and the team there, wishing them all the best as we continue through the pandemic and looking forward to things turning around in 2021. I'll we'll look forward to catching up with you again next week as we have another edition of The Morning Kick. Subscribe on YouTube, please share the video, and we'll see you again soon.